This is the Lorenz attractor. The Lorenz is an example of a coupled dynamic system consisting of three differential equations where each component depends on the state and the dynamics of the other two components. You can think of each component, for example, as being species, foxes, rabbits, grasses, and each one changes depending on the state of the other two. So these components, shown here as the axes, are actually the state variables or the Cartesian coordinates that form the state space. Notice that when the system is in one lobe, x and z are positively correlated, and when the system is in the other lobe, x and z are negatively correlated. The manifold M consists of the set of all trajectories, and phi is the flow on M defined by the coupled equations. M of t is a point on the manifold. We can view a time series, then, as a projection from that manifold onto a coordinate axis of the state space. Here we see the projection onto axis x and the resulting time series recording displacements of x. This can be repeated on the other coordinate axes to generate other simultaneous time series. So these time series are really just projections of the manifold dynamics onto coordinate axes. Conversely, we can recreate the manifold by projecting the individual time series simultaneously back into the state space to create the flow. In this panel, we can see the three time series x, y, and z each of which is really a projection of the motion on that manifold, and what we're doing is the opposite here. We are taking the time series and projecting them back into the original 3D state space to recreate the manifold, that butterfly attractor. There's a very powerful theorem proven by Floris Takens that shows generically that one can reconstruct a shadow version of the original manifold simply by looking at one of its time series projections. For example, consider the three time series shown here. These are all copies of each other. They are all copies of variable x. Each is displaced by an amount tau, so the top one is unlagged, the second one is lagged by tau, and the blue one on the bottom is lagged by 2 tau. Taken's theorem says that we should be able to use these three time series as new coordinates and reconstruct a shadow version of the original butterfly manifold. So let's see how this works. This is the reconstructed manifold produced from lags of a single variable, and you can see that it actually does look fairly similar to the butterfly attractor. Each point in the three-dimensional reconstruction can be thought of as a time segment with different points capturing different segments of history of variable x. And the reconstructed manifold is then a library or collection of the historical behavior of x. The reconstruction preserves essential mathematical properties of the original system, such as the topology of the manifold and its Lyapunov exponents. More importantly, this method represents a one-to-one -one mapping between the original manifold, the butterfly attractor, and the reconstruction mx, allowing us to recover states of the original dynamic system by using lags of just a single time series. Taken's theorem gives us a one-to-one -one mapping between the original manifold and reconstructed shadow manifolds. Here, we will explain how this important aspect of attractor reconstruction can be used to determine if two time series variables belong to the same dynamic system and are thus causally related. This particular reconstruction is based on lags of variable x. If we now do the same for variable y, we find something similar. Here, we see the original manifold m as well as the shadow manifolds mx and my created from lags of x and y respectively. Because both mx and my map one-to-one -to, -one to the original manifold m, they also map one-to-one -to, -one to each other. This implies that the points that are nearby on the manifold my correspond to points that are also nearby on mx. We can demonstrate this principle by finding the nearest neighbors in my and using their time indices to find the corresponding points in mx. These points will be nearest neighbors on mx only if x and y are causally related. Thus, we can use nearby points on my to identify nearby points on mx. This allows us to use the historical record of y to estimate the states of x and vice versa, a technique we call cross mapping. With longer time series, the reconstructed manifolds are denser, nearest neighbors are closer, and the cross map estimates increase in precision. We call this phenomenon convergent cross mapping and use this convergence as a practical criterion for detecting causation. 